Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I always wondered to myself what it would be like to have Christ with us physically here. Physically here walking. I know that he's with us in spirit, and I know that right now he's seated at the right hand of the Father above all principalities at the same time, but I'd always think, what would it be like if Christ was with us? I think things would be easier sometimes. I think maybe if someone was sick, I could just ask Jesus to come with me and lay hands and they'll be healed very quickly. I just think also if you're struggling financially or you're struggling with food, we know that he can multiply that food. We've seen that in the Bible. We've seen him walk on water. We've seen him drive demons. We've seen him teach. We've seen him bless. We've seen him prophesy. We've seen him heal. But do you know what I came to, saints? I came to a conclusion that if I continue with that mentality, I would have the same mentality as Satan. Jesus Christ was with his disciples and he gave them an example or told them something that was going to happen to him. And he said to them, I'm going to be arrested, I'm going to die. And one disciple, like me, had their own fantasy and said, that can't happen. It's not going to happen to you. And Jesus Christ said in Matthew 16, thank you, bro, you got me. Jesus Christ said, Satan, get behind me. Your mind is not on the things of God. So Dexter's fantasy is satanic. You see how powerful it is, saints, Thinking something's good, but when you check the world, it could be very destructive. Now, Jesus Christ said in the book of John, next scripture, thank you. Jesus Christ said, it is better for you that I do not stay. It is more to your advantage that I go. Because if I go, I can send you a helper. You see, saints, Jesus Christ cannot physically be in those days, 2,000 years ago, he could not physically be in more than one place. If he, was, he could not be in New York and Japan at the same time. He could not be in Israel. He could not be in the Caribbean. Those years, or 2,000 years ago, when he was during his ministry, he could only be physically in one place. So the advantage of Jesus going is that he could send a helper, the Holy Spirit, to us. And Jesus Christ said in the book of Acts, I think that might be the next scripture, thank you. He gave a command to the disciples. He said two things. In order to be clothed with the Spirit at the time, for the Holy Spirit had not yet come. And Jesus Christ said, I want you to go to Jerusalem and I want you to wait. Two instructions there. Go, number one. Number two, wait. And saints, that's what I want to focus a bit on today, is the idea of waiting. So the title of my sermon today is Wait For Me. But before I continue, saints, I do just want to say greetings to everyone from Pastor P, who is not here today. He should be returned soon. Um, I have to apologize to, um, I think, Sister Michelle, I'm going to apologize to you. We've met before, and I said, nice to meet you. I think I've not seen you for a long time, so I do apologize for that. So if I um, miss your name, I'm sorry. Um, I do travel around a bit. I see a lot of people, so I'm going to try my best to uh, work hard and remember everyone's name. So my apologies, sis, and I'm not going to forget next time. So saints, is there anyone here for the first time, if I'm looking around? Sis, is that Sister Esther? I ah, see, I got your name, okay? I'm not going to forget. God bless you. Welcome. If you don't have a church to call your home, you're more than welcome to come here. But if you do have a church, please make sure you get back there because we don't want you getting in trouble, okay? Bless you. Anyone else here for the first time? Nobody else. Okay, saints, let's get on with this sermon. So I'm talking mostly about waiting, and the sermon's going to slide into a bit of a different area later on. There is a scripture in Psalm, Psalm 40, verse 1. Thank you, brother. The psalmist, the author, wrote and said, I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me. Interesting to note, saints, that there is a bit of a description before the word I waited. The author says, I waited patiently. It tells me, saints, that not all waiting or not all forms of waiting are equal. Because there is a waiting patiently and there is impatient. Let me give you an example, okay? Because I always laugh. I don't often go shopping for clothes, but Sometimes when I do, I always laugh at the men when they're with their wives and their girlfriends. Because without fail, when you are in the clothes store, there is a certain look that a man has when his wife is in the changing room. 
they stand there like this and they're looking at their watch. And there's this like look, of, uh, this funny look that they have as if they don't want to be there. And I always find it funny. I laugh at them. And when the woman comes out, you know, she hops out of the change room like a Disney princess and says, what do you think? And he stands there like, yes, yeah, nice, yeah. And the look on his face, it tells me that you're not really engaged. The look on his face tells me that he doesn't really want to be here and he doesn't really care if the trousers are blue, black or whatever. And I have to say, saints, that I don't want that same mentality when I'm waiting for God. There is an element of patience within waiting. Now, the word wait in this scripture here, because as you're reading the Bible, and if you're reading in English, please appreciate that you're reading a translation. And the translation in the Bible, we have different languages, not many, but you have ancient Hebrew, uh, forms of Greek, and a touch of Aramaic in Nehemiah. And when you're reading the Bible and you look at the meaning of the words, you find that the English language is not quite expansive enough to capture the true meaning. And when you look at the word wait, it's the word kafar in the ancient Hebrew. And it's more to do not just sitting there like these guys in the changing rooms with their wives. It's eagerly awaiting. It's being actively engaged. It's looking forward to. It's being intertwined with God in spirit. It's walking in his word. It's looking for what he wants. It's always a thing where you are not just looking at your watch. So when the author says, I waited patiently for the Lord, we get a sense of his attitude. We get a sense of his spirit. Now, in the book of Isaiah, thank you, brother, Isaiah 40, it says, Those that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. So if you are someone in life who is striving, pushing, and you find yourself needing rest, or if you find yourself needing to be um, energized again, we have a scripture here that can help you out. Because it says those that wait, which is almost the opposite, really, of what humans tend to do, where you try to work harder. What we have to do, saints, is wait, and that word kavar, we interchange us, we kind of interwine ourselves with God, we are in his presence, we're spending time with him, we're in his word, looking at the word, we're eagerly awaiting God, we're just appreciating who he is, and I believe that is where you get your strength. So it may be the case that we need to wake up earlier, to get in a place where you can wait, because not all waiting is equal. To wait patiently requires time. To wait patiently requires effort and space. So that is, as Sister Charmaine was talking about earlier, prayer meetings and being in a house of prayer. We need to appreciate all of us, myself included, I'm talking to myself here, that in order to renew strength, we need to wait patiently on God. And ensure that even though we are going through certain things in our lives, that we are trying to make time to wait, saints. Saints, you've got the next scripture for me. Oh, sorry, Brother Kletchi. And the theme again is wait and let's see what it says. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. And then it says again, wait for the Lord. The next scripture says, I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. There seems to come a lot, or there is a good result of waiting, saints, as I'm looking in the Bible. Instead of living a life where you are constantly rushing, I'm encouraging someone today to try and take extra time early in the day to extend your hours. Because when you wait on the Lord, it says here, I waited on the Lord and he inclined to my ear. It's almost like there was a God bent down to to listen to the author. And then we had Isaiah saying, those who wait on the Lord renew their strength. And we're talking about hope and we're talking about Um, staying strong in the Lord and it all boils down to saints being in a position to wait patiently saints brother miracle if you can kindly join me thank you just a sense to play something slow now saints also note about patience is that patience is a form of love it's an expression of love the bible says in 1 Corinthians 13 4 that love is patience 
It is kind. So it's the first thing that is written. It does not say it's roses or a box of chocolates. It does not say it's money. In 1 Corinthians 13, 4, the first thing that love is, is patient. Your ability to tolerate delay is an expression of love. My mother and her daughter, my stepsister, she wanted to go somewhere one time uh, to some cafe or something in Birmingham or Brighton, wherever it was a little while ago. And I drove them there. It was about two hours. And I didn't go in the place with them. They went in the restaurant and they ate. All I was doing was, because it was very difficult to park down there, I just drove all that way and I waited. Then they went into the restaurant, had their fun after a few hours and came back. And without me saying anything, my mum was explaining something to my little sister here. There was something about how I waited for them. I wasn't checking my watch. I wasn't huffing and puffing. I was just very still, very calm. And my mum was trying to explain that that was an expression of love. Though there was nothing bought, there was no jewelries, there was no diamonds. There's something about when you place yourself in a position and just wait on God that I believe encourages joy in his presence. To, taste, to say something a little bit controversial, just my opinion here. It is not necessarily that you have to pray harder to draw near to God. God said, if you draw near to me, I'll draw near to you. But I believe that there is something that makes God's heart go, and that's anyone's ability to wait on him. That time, that effort, that commitment, that energy that you place into God in that you're waiting for him, not necessarily asking for anything, but just getting up in the morning or in the evening if you're a night person and saying, I'm just going to think about you, God. I'm going to think about your word. Because it says in the word that I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined to my ear. The Bible says that those that wait on the Lord, they shall renew their strength. That word kavar, it's eagerly awaiting, spending time with someone. And saints, the reason why I'm saying this, mostly to kind of curve off a little bit, is because that's what happened before the Holy Spirit came. If you can hold on, Kalechi, sorry. What happened was when Jesus gave this command in the book of Acts, he says, I want you to go and wait now remember what waiting is saints it's an expression of love because love is patient not only that it draws you near to God and it encourages strength because it says in Isaiah again to repeat those that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength and so these men went and waited and waited and we see in the Bible, you can check it in your own time, but in the book of Acts, when you try to calculate the, the amount of people that were there at the start, and then the amount of people that were there when the Holy Spirit came, there was a decrease. Because that's what created the separation. You see, not everyone can tolerate delay to that degree. Not everyone makes that time to stretch forth and to just wait on the Lord waiting on him, just acknowledging who he is, just whispering his word, thinking about his will, trying to say thank you for everything. And saints, there is a command in the book of Ephesians. Thank you, brother. Ephesians chapter 5. It says, be not filled with wine with excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I believe one of the ways that you are filled with the Holy Spirit is to exercise waiting on God. Waiting in your private time. Now I find this illustration fascinating. How the Holy Spirit goes from being drunk, essentially, to being filled with the Holy Spirit. Because saints, when you think of drunkenness or being uh, filled with alcohol to a certain degree... 
you, you, you can sometimes you, you think of memories where people have said things and done things and they come after and say that wasn't me talking or they got in a fight and said that's not me that was the alcohol and the reason why they say that is because they were under the influence of alcohol and there was one brother who goes to South London there's, there's a church in South London and I was in a, a place with him uh, the country shall remain nameless because I broke the law there when I say I broke the law, I preached there. I wasn't meant to preach because I didn't have the right visa. You need a certain visa to preach. I went there with a tourist visa and preached, so I broke the law. So we was in this country, and I was talking to him about alcohol. I don't know how we got there, but he said to me, I don't drink alcohol, and I said, why? And he said that he was at a party one time, and he had some alcohol, you know, nothing to it. The next day, somebody showed him a video of himself. And he was fighting people and he was falling down the stairs. And he said to me, Dexter, that wasn't me. I'm not like that. He said, I did not like what I saw. So since then he said, I don't drink anymore. Saints, I'm saying all that to say is that within this passage, it's talking about influence of alcohol. Then immediately it's talking about being filled with the spirit because I believe that there is another influence, saints. It's the influence of the Holy Spirit. So in the same vein where someone could be under the influence of alcohol, there is a holy influence that comes, I believe, when you wait on God. Saints, I was ministering last week at a church and someone came to me afterwards. And they said to me, oh, you know, this is my story. Can you pray for me? So I began to pray. They were moving to a different country and wanted prayer. So I prayed for them on something that was nothing to do with what they had asked for. And I prayed for their family and asked to give him wisdom and how to talk to his family. And then afterwards he said to me, you know, it's just weird how I didn't ask you to pray for that, but you did. Do you know why that happened, saints? It's because I was under the influence as I was praying. My mind was on the thing that he had asked. But as I was praying, there was a leading of the Holy Spirit. There was an influence, saints, that led me to pray for something that we didn't really discuss. And sometimes you'll be in situations whereby someone is flashing across your mind all the time. And it happened with me a few months back. There was a man who had left our church. And he kept, as I was on the train, you know, sitting there, uh, waiting for the train on the platform, just kept coming to my mind. And I didn't think anything of it. And then after, I said, okay, something's up here. I was under the influence. My thinking, my thoughts were under the influence of the Holy Spirit. So I text him, long story, and managed to help him out in the situation. There was someone else, saints, when I ministered last week, and they came to me and I prayed for them and a very similar thing happened where they had asked for prayer and I had prayed for something completely off, t off target, off key. Why? Because I was under the influence of the Holy Spirit. You see why it is very important to wait on God and to practice waiting on God, to practice being in his presence, just to be in his face, just to sing the Lord a song, just to quote his word. Why? Because it can result in the renewing of your strength. Why? Because it puts you under the influence of the Holy Spirit and under the leading of the Holy Spirit. Saints, I had an argument with my brother a few years ago. It was over something so silly. Almost the equivalent of someone stepping on your shoes and not saying sorry. It was something minor. Saints, we didn't really talk for a year. And again, it kept coming to me after time. You need to make peace. You need to make peace. And so I would kind of just forget about it, but it would come back. Why? Because I am under the influence of the Holy Spirit. You need to make peace. But every time I phoned him and speak to him, it was very sharp. I got sharp responses. It wasn't working. I said, Lord, I said, Holy Spirit, lead me. I need to be under your influence because I need the right time in here. And then one day we met and he just walked up and went into the fridge and I just felt right there, start talking. Then I asked him if he had had a minute. 
And while before all of his responses were sharp, just that moment when he went to the fridge and I said, you have a minute, it's like his countenance changed and he just opened up. Why? Because under the influence of the Holy Spirit, I found the right timing. It is essentially so for saints for us as believers to spend time with the Lord, to wait patiently so you can be inclined to your ear, so you can renew your strength, so you can live your life with the right timing, to move in the right place, to open your mouth when you need to, to keep your mouth shut when you need to, when to bless, when to walk away, where to go, where not to go. We, it is essential for us, saints, that we are clothed with the Holy Spirit. Next scripture. We read in um, the book of Acts, I think, what well, we've got, Acts chapter 2. Let's just read it together because this is, I'm trying to hit home here. This is kind of the last kind of section of the sermon. After Jesus had given a command and said, go and wait. After you read on, this is where we get to. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven. A sound like a mighty rushing wind. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Thank you, brother. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. You see the chain of dominoes, the command from Jesus saying, go and wait. And we're reading in the Bible about how waiting places you in a position where God is inclined to your ear. We're talking about waiting on God, helping to renew your strength. And we're seeing a final result here of a group of individuals being clothed with the Holy Spirit, speaking in other languages, in tongues. And the Bible says, so you won't have the scripture there, brother, sorry. The Bible says that he who speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself. That word edify in the Greek is the word oki dome, something like that. It means to build yourself up. And when you pray in the spirit, as you pray in tongues, I believe that you are building up your spirit man. You're becoming more sensitive to his leading. You are placing yourself under the influence as you pray, as you pray. I believe even saints, the Bible says that those when we speak in tongues, we are speaking mysteries unto God. I believe saints that when you pray, demons understand what you're saying. Angels can hear you. And the evidence that I have for that is because when Daniel prayed, there was an angel that came to him and said, well, to paraphrase, we heard your prayer, but there was resistance. Resistance, which I believe was from the kingdom of darkness. So not only when you are praying in English, not only does God hear you, not only can you hear yourself, not only do angels hear you, but demons hear as well. And saints, I believe when you pray in the Holy Spirit, personally, demons don't understand what you're saying and as you pray in the spirit as you're praying mysteries unto God it's like giving us a, a special language where the kingdom of darkness doesn't understand can you imagine being in some kind of war and you've intercepted the sound of your enemies radios and they are speaking in a language you cannot understand where on earth do you attack from where on earth do you try to make a strategy? You can't. So there is an advantage when you pray and pray and pray in the Spirit. Saints, we are instructed to wait on the Lord because it causes God to be inclined to our ear. Saints, waiting on God renews your strength. I believe that waiting on the Lord causes you to be filled with His Spirit. And as a result, causes you, saints, to be under the influence of his spirit. I believe, saints, that when you're under the influence of his spirit, you can speak in another language. And doing so, I believe, builds you up in spirit and allows you to speak utterance. 
unto our King. And saints, I want to give an opportunity to us, all of us this afternoon, for two things, really. Number one, if you would just like to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to be refreshed, I want to give someone an opportunity there as well. And the second thing I want to say is, if there's anyone here who has not yet spoken in other languages or not yet spoken in tongues, I want to give that opportunity this afternoon. It is not a complicated process. It is not long. I do not need to shout. We don't need to scream. There is a very simple method I have. And I have seen tens and tens of people speak. I've seen tens and tens of people see visions. I've seen children. I've seen adults just be clothed from on high in the Holy Spirit. Let us stand, saints. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. If you can please pull up the book of John. I think it's the last scripture, chapter 7. Speaking about being filled with wine, or not being filled with wine, but being filled with the Spirit. Jesus said something as well on the topic of drinking. Jesus Christ said, on the last day of the feast, that great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Next verse, brother. Thank you. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart, or some translations will say, out of his innermost being, will flow rivers of living water. Next verse. Thank you. Now, this is what Jesus said about the spirit whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the spirit had not been given because Jesus was not yet glorified. And I believe that we are in a dispensation today, saints, where Jesus has been glorified. He died. On the third day, he rose again, and he sent the Holy Spirit to us. Thank you, Father. Jesus, your word said, hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Your word said, if any man is thirsty, to come and drink. If anyone is thirsty, you said, come and drink. Out of his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. If that's one of you today, come forward. We're just going to do a prayer. If you wish to be filled afresh with the Holy Spirit, then please come.